Hi, this is Kim from Emerging Creatively Tutorials, and this is ECT TV, episode 40. So hello and welcome to today's episode of ECT TV. Today we are going to be making an anklet. Now this is something I haven't really made or thought about for a while, but now it's getting warm here where I am and I'm wearing a lot of sandals, so anklets are perfect for this time of year. So the inklet we're going to be making is pretty simple and in fact you can use the same tutorial and just make it a bracelet if you're not into anklets. Um, so it's fun, it's simple, adds a little bit of extra flair to your leg. Um, so let's get started. Okay, so let me show you what you're going to need for this project. You're going to need a chain. And I am going to use this kind of big chunky chain. Um, I believe I got this at Fire Mountain Gems several years ago. Um, or you can use a nice small delicate chain. Um, whatever chain you prefer to use is fine. You'll need some jump rings and I'm going to be using 7 millimeter jump rings um, kind of as and end, um, you'll need a lobster class too, so it will kind of attach into those. And then I'm also going to be using a couple four millimeter jump rings um, to attach the bead dangle and charm I'm going to attach. Um, so it, the size of jump ring doesn't matter so much. Um, so if you have some on hand that aren't exactly those sizes, that's fine. I am going to be using 24 gauge wire and then I have this little feather charm and a turquoise bead that I will be using um, for this and you can really use any charm you like and any bead you like. Um, it's completely up to you. And then the tools that you'll need are wire cutters. You will need um, chain nose pliers. <laughs> You'll need bent nose pliers or another pair of kind of any kind of flat pliers and also a pair of round nose pliers. So I just want to pause for a moment to bring you a word from our sponsors. <laughs> Actually, ECT TV is just a part of what I do. I actually have a whole website uh, full of different individual jewelry tutorials, so they're available with their, via PDF. I have workshops in which you will learn how to make just like one thing with a video and a PDF. I have e-courses and I have e-books and I even have a couple print books. So. Um, if you want to support ECT TV and all the free content I bring to you over at my website at KimberlyKohler.com, um, come on over and see what I have and see if there's something that you might be interested in. I'll put the link below this video, but it's KimberlyKohler.com slash shop and you'll find e-courses, e-books, um, patterns, and I even have some supplies which I'm planning on adding some more um, so if you head over there I'd really appreciate it thanks for your time for checking out what I have to offer it really does help support these um, free lessons that I bring to you so back to our tutorial okay to get started measure your chain around your ankle and um, figure out how long your anklet needs to be and then you're going to cut the chain 
or in my case with this thick chain, I don't really want to use my wire cutters on it. In most chain, you can just kind of take apart almost like a jump ring. So I'm just kind of going to do it that way because I don't want to make my wire cutters dull. So um, I have that chain and we're just going to kind of set it aside for now and work on the charms that will be going onto the chain. So first I'm going to make a bead dangle. <clears throat> So first I'm going to make a bead dangle with this little turquoise kind of oval tabular uh, bead. And one thing you want to think about when you are making an anklet as opposed to a bracelet or something like else like that, which you can certainly use this tutorial and make a bracelet um, as well. But when you're thinking about an anklet, you don't want things to be, you know, too dangly necessarily. Um, I feel like it gets a lot more uh, wear and tear down by your feet than maybe your bracelets do. So you just kind of want to, you know, maybe make sure your dangle isn't super long. You don't want it to drag on the floor. <laughs> so that's one thing you can think about. So I'm actually going to be using 24 uh, gauge half hard round wire. And I'm going to make a bead dangle, but I'm going to make my own head pin first. Um, so I'm cutting a few inches of this wire, and I'm actually going to make a knotted head pin, which I've shown you on this um, on this series before, uh, but I'm going to kind of show you again. So um, I cut this a little too long. Give me a few inches. About a third of the way down, you're going to kind of bend the wire and then just kind of make sure it's smushed together there. And so you have your wire like this. And then I just hold the very tip of the wire. I'm using my chain nose pliers. And then I'm going to make a bend. And so you end up with a kind of your in just a little bit with this part and then up a little bit so it's not really an L because there's a little notch in the end so then you just sort of can hold that little notch um, with your chain of pliers and we're just going to wrap around to kind of make it look like a knot and this can be as sloppy or as clean as you like um, it can be a little difficult to kind of hold on as you're doing your wraps, so wherever you have to kind of hold the wire, go ahead and do. And you can use your bent nose pliers to help do this wrapping as well. Sometimes it's easier with your finger, sometimes you might want another pair of pliers to help you. And you just kind of keep going around until either you run out of wire or uh, you are satisfied with the look. Alright, and then you can just trim off any excess wire with your wire cutters. And then just come back in with your... Um, chain those pliers and make sure that end is not poking out. And so that is a knotted head pin. And now I'm just going to place my bead. I'm just going to slide it on that wire. And then that knot holds it on at the end. And I'm grabbing my round nose pliers and I'm going to make this into a bead dangle. So I just kind of hold the wire up um, just a small distance above the bead. I wrap the wire around one barrel of the uh, pliers. And then I take this off. And then you'll see this loop is crooked. I want it to be straight. So usually how I do this is as I wrap the wire around one time, I'm going to go around, I straighten out the loop. 
and you can switch hands and continue to make your wire wrap loop. And you want to go around a few times, but you just want to keep all those wraps straight and close together. And this wire is very thin, so you can just use your fingers if you want, or you can use pliers to do the wrapping. Then we're just going to trim off the excess wire. And I'm grabbing my chain nose pliers again just to make sure that end is not poking out. And you might want to just run your finger to make sure you got it. So that is the uh, bead dangle. I'm also adding a little feather charm that I just got. I believe I got these kind of in the bead section at Michael's. Alright, so I'm just pulling out a few of my 7mm uh, jump rings. And I'm actually going to go ahead and attach um, the clasp for this bracelet. So I'm using a lobster clasp just because it's is probably the best class to use for an anklet just to make sure it's hooked in. I can't imagine using a toggle, toggle class for something like that um, around my ankle. I just, it doesn't feel secure enough. So um, I'm using a lobster class. Alright, so I'm actually going to open up a jump ring in case you haven't done this before. So you'll need a pair of, two pairs of pliers. Um, as long as they're flat on the inside, it kind of doesn't matter what kind you're using. So I'm using chain nose and bent nose, and they, these two pair of pliers are perfect for opening jump rings. So you'll find a little slit in the jump ring, and then you're going to put your pliers on either side. So you're just going to kind of position them. And then you don't want to ever open a jump ring out. You want to try to maintain this circle, um, but just kind of do an opening so that you can slide the chain in. So you hold each side with a pair of pliers, and with one you're going to go toward you, and one you're going to go away from you. Like that. So you can kind of see that it's still a circle, but it's open. So now I'm going to attach my um, lobster clasp. Oops. And I am using 7mm jump rings. I mentioned 4mm for attaching things, but which is great probably depending on the chain you're using, but the chain I'm actually using is really thick and so the four millimeter jump rings won't work. If you're using just kind of an average size chain, um, the four millimeter would work and I would actually attach a four millimeter, uh, the clasp of a four millimeter jump ring in that case. And so I put the chain in and then I put the clasp in and try not to drop everything like I just did. And now we're going to close the jump ring, and we just do the opposite of what we just did um, with to open it. But when I close it, I like to go past the point of where it would close a couple times, and then you can hear or feel. Um, more times you'll feel it click into place, not always you'll hear it, and you can get that lined right back up perfect. If you have a jump ring that's a little bit weird, like the one I'm using, you can still kind of work with it until it gets into place. And so that is one end. On the other end, I like to use, in this case I would use 7mm jump rings, regardless of what um, size your chain is. And I just add a couple and that's just to close the brace, uh, the anklet. Um, you'll hook your lobster clasp into it. Um, I just make a couple, put a few because I like to have a little bit of room to play with. And if you're not making this for yourself, you're making it for somebody else, then um, it gives them a little bit of room to wiggle. And I didn't say this because I was just thinking we'd be making this for ourselves. Um, most anklets 
are around nine inches long so if you're just kind of making it not for yourself or you can't measure that is a good length so now we have a completed uh, anklet chain here and we're going to add on charms here so um, I'm just going to pick the middle you could also actually just add the charms to these jump rings that are hanging um, where the clasp comes in and that would actually be really nice too because um, it would be right in the middle and and this part could just like hang over your ankle I'm gonna actually get on the opposite side so I'm just gonna find the middle and again I'm opening up a seven millimeter jump ring and in this case you may want to use a four millimeter jump ring if you are using a different chain so I'm just picking the length that was in the middle and I'm actually going to add um, both of my items together so I'm gonna add my feather charm and my bead dangle together I was just taking the jump ring off of that feather charm because I don't want it on there I want to just use my own jump ring that I'm using so that's what I was doing so I'm adding my charm and adding my bead dangle and now I am closing a jump ring So that is my anklet. Um, it's really simple. It's super cute. I'm not going to model it because I don't want to show you my feet. <laughs> but it will be really fun for you this summer. And you can make several of these and kind of layer them or you could add different types of anklets together or just have different options um, to get you through the warm season so I hope you have fun with that and um, and you can make this as a bracelet if you prefer and I will see you next time I just also want to remind you to come over to KimberlyKohler.com and you'll find the show notes for this episode you'll also find this tutorial in photos as well so you can watch the video and then kind of go through the photos and remind yourself when you're actually making this anklet and for those of you who sign up for my newsletter you get this in PDF form each time I have a new episode. So when you're watching this, you maybe miss this one in PDF, but you can get future episodes in PDF form. And that is really great because then you can download it and save it to your computer or print it, whatever you want to do. Um, so to get on my mailing list, come over to KimberlyKohler.com. You'll see on the right hand side how to sign up. You also get a free 14 day intro to jewelry making e-course which is very um, in focused on wire working actually. Um, so a lot of people have gotten a lot of benefits out of that. So when you sign up you automatically get the free e-course and um, you get future PDFs of all the ECT TV episodes right in your inbox when they're ready. So, come on over to KimberlyKohler.com.